In Havana, Cuba, an old musician by the name of Hander Residential Hernandez, played by Juan Delaware Marcos Gonzalez, makes his way to the central plaza of the town with his pet friend Kinkaju Vivo, a character played by Lin-Manuel Miranda. Because Hander Residential is famous and has known for many years and is regarded an excellent musician, the two set up to perform a song called One of a Kind in front of an enthusiastic audience. Vivo reveals in his song that Hander Residential discovered him when Ichi was a little boy wandering the streets alone after rescuing him from two large dogs. He further mentions that both Hander Residential and Ichi have spent the better part of the past few years doing nothing but creating great music together, and Vivo could not be any happier about it. The worst thing he wants to do is live a life without Hander Res. Well, let's see how it goes. Before we proceed, if you haven't subscribed yet, I don't really know what you're still waiting for. Please consider subscribing and comment with your favorite part of the movie. Now that you are done subscribing, would you consider hitting the thumbs up? Awesome. You're doing great. Let's get back to work. In the next scene we see that Hander Residential gets a letter from his ex-girlfriend Murda Sandoval, played by Gloria Estefan, who is not just a superb but also famous singer and is currently doing her final concerts. Something specular about Murda is that, when she sings, the crows gets crazy. In the letter, Murda expresses her desire for Hander Residential to join her in Miami so that they may perform together one more time. Nothing could make Murda more excited than laying her lovely eye on Hander Residential at least one more time. In the next scene, Hander Residential brings Vivo home and tells him that he and Murda used to write music and play together, and that he was deeply in love with her. He further reveals that when she murder got her big break, he chose not to tell her because he was afraid that she might not be able to achieve her dreams because of him. Not to get Vivo jealous, Hander Residential reveals to Vivo that he loves him too. Well, not the kind of love he has for Murta though. In order to convey how he truly felt for her, he even composed a song for her called Mambo Cabana. Unfortunately, the song never got to reach Murta. What a sad part to hear. As soon as Hander Residential informs Vivo that Ichi intends to go on the trip in search of his missing rib. I mean the love of his life, Vivo storms out of the flat in a rage since he does not want anything to disrupt what he has going on in his life at that moment. Vivo, on the other hand, chooses to go back and give Hander Res a hand in packing his bag after doing some introspection and coming to the conclusion that Hander Residential has always been there for him. The following morning, as Vivo is all set to travel, he receives the tragic news that Hander Residential never woke up to see the next day. Hander Residential was dead. This even kept Vivo more furious. Moving forward, as soon as the other residents of the town found out about his passing, they gathered in the central plaza to grieve for him. Among the many gathered there, Hander Res' niece Rosa, played by Zoe Saldana, gives a speech as her daughter Gabby, a character played by Anerali Simo, listens. Gabby is aware of who Vivo is and wants to keep him as their family pet. However, Vivo declines her request since he finds Gabby to be strange. When Vivo overhears Rosa informing Gabby that they are going home to Florida, he stows away in the bag with Hander Rez's possessions and travels back to Florida with Gabby and in order to personally deliver Hander Rez's song to Murda in Miami. Vivo makes an attempt to free himself from the suitcase as soon as they arrive in Florida but he is unable to do so since the tail of his tail is trapped in the zipper. Gabby is super thrilled to see him and believes that he sneaked into the bag to be with her. Vivo reveals that Gabby is wrong. She invites him into her room, where she performs the song titled My Own Drum, in which she discusses how she is unique in comparison to everyone else. Despite this, she continues to mourn the loss of her father Carlos. Gabby is adamantly opposed to Rose's request that she join the Sand Dollars troupe in selling cookies while wearing a uniform. The following thing that happens is that she finds Murda's letter to Hander Res, and then Vivo offers Gabby the song that Hander Residential created. After Gabby realized why Vivo had traveled all the way to Miami, she immediately agreed to assist him in delivering the music to Murda and booked a ticket on the next available bus. Gabby runs into the sand dollars as she makes her way to the bus. Becky, played by Katie Lowe's, Eva, played by Olivia Trujillo, and Sarah, a character played by Lydia Jewett, are trying to recruit Gabby as a member of their group, 
and they are being overly enthusiastic about it. Their passion about recruiting Gabby even gets more serious when Gabby shows them Vivo. Eva and Sarah immediately start gushing over him, but Becky reminds them that a kinkajou has to be vaccinated and kept in a secure environment. When Gabby realizes that the bus is departing, she hops on her bicycle and starts seriously pursuing the bus. Becky, Eva and Sarah did not leave Gabby, they trailed after her as well. Unfortunately for Gabby and Vivo, in an attempt to cross a siring bridge, they crashed and land on a boat filled with sand. Well, instead of being sad, Gabby takes everything lightly and makes more fun before she can initiate another plan. Meanwhile, Rosa discovers the webpage for bus tickets and becomes aware of Gabby's plan. The sand dollars make a solemn promise to bring Vivo to a place of safety. She embarks on a great drive to bring her daughter back home. Hmm, let's wait ANSD how that goes too. Going back to Gabby and Vivo, after getting off of the larger boat, Gabby builds a smaller boat for them to cruise aboard. They eventually find themselves sailing into the Everglades and attempting to navigate through a hurricane that is becoming increasingly hazardous keep the beat. Gabby chases after the lyrics when it flies away from Vivo, which ultimately results in the two of them being separated from one another. Fortunately for him, when wandering in the forest, Vivo meets a lonely and sad spoonbill by the name of Dan Carino, real name's Brian Tyree Henry. Dan Carino is depressed and thinks of him as a loser because all of the other birds have successfully found partners, while he is the only one who is still single. In exchange for his assistance in locating Gabby, Vivo offers to provide him a hand in his pursuit of a female spoonbill named Valentina, a character played by Nicole Byer. After carefully following Vivo's instructions, Dan Carino is successful and has found his mate loves gonna pick you up. He was super excited that decides to leave Vivo behind and get crazy with his new love. He flies away together with Valentina. Vivo is further wandering in the forest before he meets an anti-noise guy, Ludador. He is confronted by a giant python named Ludador, Michael Rooker, that makes an effort to eat Vivo, but the Kinkajou escapes by darting between the branches of the trees and leaping to great heights which allows Dan Carino to fulfill his part of the bargain and shows up for Vivo's rescue. Meanwhile, Gabby is located by the sand dollars, and then Becky grabs the lyrics of the song that Gabby is searching for. She guarantees that she would return it to its original location on the condition that Gabby will hand over Vivo so that they may quarantine him. Gabby gives in with some reluctance. Ludador, the python finds them when they are traveling through the swamp on the boat owned by the sand dollars and he makes an attempt to attack them. Gabby is able to protect the girls by putting them behind a cage. Nevertheless, Lidador begins to pressure the cage and is on the verge of breaking through it until Vivo swoops down on Dan Carino and convinces Lidador to get himself tangled up in a tree. The scene is called Tough Crowd. When the girls realize that the song has been badly destroyed because it fell into the river and was washed away, their victory is short-lived. The Sand Dollars feel terrible about what they did and they start walking Vivo and Gabby back to their house. During the journey home, Gabby, the stubborn girl, starts singing the tune to herself, but Vivo points out that her singing and type of music is old-fashioned and goes ahead and further shows her how it's done. When he plays the music on his recorder, he and Gabby discover that they are able to recreate the song since she can recall the words and he is familiar with the melody. One more song, reprise. After that, Everyone comes to the conclusion that they need to get to Miami in order to accomplish the task. Murda, on the other hand, has spent the entire day hoping to hear from Hander Residential before her performance. However, her assistant gives her a newspaper that reports Hander Residential has passed away, and Murda is heartbroken when she reads it. The girls are successful in their journey to Miami, and in running out of time, Vivo and Gabby are shown racing on bicycles to the Mambo Cabana in order to get to the event in time. When they got there, Rosa was already there waiting for them, and she immediately went after Gabby. They are pursued by security until they get somewhat near to Murda's dressing room, but only Vivo is able to get by them and inside. He receives the music from Gabby after she has said him farewell. Murda, who was looking through the newspaper, discovers Vivo and knows him from the photo she saw of him with Hander Res. When he presents it to her, Murda finally understands that Hander Residential was in love with her the whole time. 
After looking at a picture of him, she declares, I love you too, Handeres. Now that her spirits have been raised, she prepares to do the performance. Rosa is currently driving Gabby home while berating her for running away in the manner in which she did. During the discussion, Rosa admits that she is not as talented as Carlos was but that she is striving to be the best that she can be. Rosa is taken aback when Vivo turns up because she had believed that he was still in Cuba. This leads her to conclude that Gabby had been speaking the truth about their objective. While Gabby is telling Rosa that she simply wanted Murda to know that Handa Residential loved her, she breaks down into tears. She explains that this is because she never got the chance to tell Carlos that she loved him before he passed away. After Rosa has finished telling Gabby and Vivo that her dad has always loved them, she goes to give them a hug. After that, she turns the car around, and they arrive just in time to see Murda play Hander Rez's song as the closing act of the presentation. Vivo travels back to his house with Gabby and then follows her to the town plaza, where they play one of a kind, reprise, with the assistance of the Sand Dollars, Rosa, and even Murda. They have won the hearts of the fans, and Vivo now has a new family. I hope you enjoyed the movie. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more movies like this one, please subscribe. Take care, and I will see you in the next movie. Peace.